Greetings from Somerville. Today we are going to talk about love, romance, relationships. Dating as a comedian is a very difficult thing because we are always traveling and we work at night and on weekends, which is when most people tend to have relationships and date and see each other and do social things. Well, that's when we actually work. So it makes it awfully challenging to, to date someone, particularly someone with a quote-unquote uh, regular normal job, a day job that nine to five because our schedules are completely opposite. I dated one woman. I was traveling. I literally went on the road for two months, and I, I tried to argue with her that um, I was said uh, dating me is like the Olympics. I, I you look forward to seeing me, and I come around just once in a while, and right before you get sick of me, I leave. And she never quite felt. She didn't think that was as funny as I did, but <laughs> but anyway, um, it's a difficult thing to maintain a relationship, and so it's hard in the business. I don't tend to want to date some some people. You'll meet someone after a show, or an audience member might like you or think you're great, which is always nice. But the truth is, they don't really know you. They see you on stage, and that's a shined up version of you that took 15 years to write. That's not really the real you. So the few times I've actually gone out with somebody who saw me at a show first it was just it never went well because they're like wow you're not always funny and I'm like no that's uh, that's my job <laughs> that's uh, sometimes I, I get sad and they didn't seem to want to deal with that part of me so it's an interesting life um and I also tend to not want to date too much in within the industry on my side of the business, or even because it's just you're around it so much. When you're in entertainment, it consumes you. Probably most jobs these days, you're, you're thinking about it all the time. So the last thing I want is to have to think about it when I'm also with my significant other. So anyway, this is all a long-winded way of saying that I am single again. <laughs> it's, it's, there have been two women that I could have seen myself being with and, and probably spending my life with. But timing-wise, it was such that I, I wasn't where I was with I wanted with my career, and, and they I had to make a choice. And I, I wonder every day if I made the right choice. But I, I have faith that I'm doing what I love, and I, it will happen when it happens. The right person will come along. Um, in the meantime, my parents are really, really just pushing for a grandchild. So <laughs> they're getting much less particular with who it's with, too. They're just pointing out anyone. Um, so... <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see. But that brings me to a very heartwarming episode today. My guests, two guests, are married now. They are entertainers. They met in the business on opposite sides of the world. They pursued each other. And I just wanted to share it with you guys today. Here we are. With my good friends Josh and Layla, this is... Ah, I'm so excited about today's interview. This is my favorite couple. Um, who would I aspire to be someday? Um, but although I have to get out of bed before noon, I think, to be you guys. But th I wanted to bring you guys in today because you have one of my favorite stories about meeting each other, getting to know each other, being kind of worlds apart in some ways. Um, and I wanted to ask uh, how it all started. So, um, so if, let's start from separate worlds. Josh, you are from? From, uh, I've lived in New, York, in New York City now for about six or seven years, originally from Ohio. Yeah, okay. So, I, but most of my work has been uh, in, throughout the world in the last, like, six years, so most of my, when people say, when you're from, I go, I don't know, <laughs> wherever, wherever I happen to be that week. Really Where is, is it today? It is. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then next week, it'll be something different, because, um. We've been traveling around so much, so it's hard to basically just have an address, and off you go. And you are a singer dancer. Yeah, singer. Uh, I always I love this the phrase triple threat. Is that? Uh, I mean, people that say that, but I no one ever wants to label themselves as that. It sounds so pretentious to me. Is that I, right? Yes, I'm like, oh, please don't say that. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, singer really, uh, singer with a couple of different uh, vocal groups that uh, get hired for land gigs and, and, and ship gigs and then sometimes like we're doing now we'll work for the company properly you know paid by the it, 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 we're basically just hired guns who will do anything <laughs> for money if you let us sing and dance <laughs> and kind of cavort around on stage sure that's fine so I think calling yourself a hired gun sounds way more cocky than calling yourself a triple threat yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hired, hired, hired gun so Josh from Ohio and then Layla from 
Melbourne, Australia. Melbourne, Australia. Yeah. My goodness. Uh -huh. And what, tell us about your upbringing. When did you, you are also a performer. I am. I started How dancing. How did it start? Well, I started <laughs> dancing from a very young age, um, but didn't really have great training until I graduated from high school and then I went to a performing arts school for three years. Oh, wow. That's when I started singing as well. Still in Australia? Yes, in okay. Australia. Um, and after I graduated, um, I signed up to an agency and then started looking for work and um, that's when I started traveling as well. Let's time out real quick. You say signed up for an agency. Is it something that is that simple? You're like, oh, I'm now a dancer and a performer and I can just sign up? Or, cause it, or is that just a language thing? Because in the oh, States we would say yeah. fi we, we had to find an, an agent. agent, we were looking for an agent, right. we couldn't get an agent. Right. Um, Another so cocky thing to say. You <laughs> signed up for an agent. <laughs> you guys are the most humble people I knew, I thought. Yeah. And all of a sudden, I'm a hired gun. I just sign up for things. Yeah, I just called so Spielberg and got a movie. <laughs> well, basically, um, the, I didn't the school. Mean to touch. No, no, not at all. I um, after I graduated, uh, the school that I studied with was an agency also ah, and nice. so they asked if I wanted to sign up to their agency post graduation Perfect. so they helped me a lot okay that's um, a nice little feeder then yes. yeah yes. it was a, a great segue into the industry yeah um, and and uh, is there a large art scene in Australia there is especially in Melbourne and Sydney okay Obviously, we don't have the population to support the, the caliber of um, acts there are in the States. Okay. Um, it's a much smaller scale. Okay. Um, but, yeah, Melbourne and Sydney in particular, um, they love their performers. Wonderful. They love the arts. And those are the two kind of main cities, right? In, in Australia. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right. That's that makes sense then. Where all the big shows kind of go. Right. Right. Um, they may go to Queensland or... They may, sometimes if they have a tour in Australia, they will also tour in Asia, because that's next door. Okay, okay. So they'll, you know, go to Sydney, uh, Sydney. <laughs> next door. Singapore, um, Hong Kong, usually. And next door is how many thousands Ooh. of miles? Right. <laughs> <laughs> For, you know, uh, an island that far away from everything else. Yes, yes. yes that's the neighbors. Okay. <laughs> So, so go ahead. So you start performing in Australia and yeah. doing what kind of stuff? Um, mostly dancing gigs for the first year. And then after that, I booked a job in Japan, um, which was singing and dancing. Okay. Um, so that's when I started growing as a singer. Okay. Uh, Do you have a favorite, singing or dancing or both? Um, you know, I used to be a lot stronger a dancer obviously because I've done that my whole life okay and so I favored that right um, but as I've gotten older and as I've realized that I'm at an age where I need to kind of think about not being able to dance forever okay um, I have put a lot of energy into singing and so I love them both equally okay yeah. And I should add as to the listeners who cannot see us now, as we're doing this interview, Layla is sitting on the bed in a position that I it would take me ten years to train in. And she is comfortably doing an interview just in a it would take me a, ten years to train in, to do that. And I could then I could do it for thirty seconds. She's casually sitting here. I'm in a chair and I'm already sore. I'm I'm shifting, I'm screaming. <laughs> okay, so bring us up to wit. That let's drum roll now. How did the worlds c conspire that you two come together or meet for the first time? I was singing with a, a group out of Las Vegas, uh, and that's how actually you and I met. Okay. Was the, the same show? It's called Oh What a Night, and uh, we were jobbing on just for four or five days onto a ship that Layla was boarding the same day. We didn't know anything about that. I was just coming on to sing and leave. And uh, we boarded in, was it Tampa? Tampa, yeah. Florida? Yep. Together. We didn't meet each other that day. We were in the same room, but we didn't know who each other were. It was funny. Right. We looked back like I was filling out some form, and so was she, and she was and two tables, three tables away. Right. And little did we know that years later, here we'd be talking about this, but <laughs> we met each other uh, there, and... I kind of froze and didn't want to sound like a 
I mean, I was leaving, and I know the kind of connotations that come with the people that come on, and you do your show and you leave. <laughs> so I asked her to lunch. That was that was all I was like. So how long were you on this ship for? Five days. Oh, this is a quick thing. But yeah. in that time, you met five her, days. got to yeah. know her, didn't want to sound like a cheese ball. It's, it's exactly right. Okay. I, I was like, okay, what's a safe thing that she knows, like, it's cool. <laughs> yeah. you trust me. I'm not a creep. <laughs> What's a we'll, safe thing? We'll meet in a well lit well public lit area. Public right. area. <laughs> During the day. At a decent <laughs> hour. No alcohol involved. <laughs> yeah. So I what was, a gentleman. Well, I was trying to send the good, you know, the the right message. So okay. that's, that's so you knew did. right away you liked her. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, we were. I mean, we were play. They were playing some some game in the in the the crew bar one evening and and. and Cards against humanity. Yeah, <laughs> so they were playing, and I remember I'd had like two beers, and I was like, "I want to be on your team." Yeah. <laughs> it only took and two goes, beers, huh? Okay, she just said, "All right." So, oh. you know, so I was like, "Oh, oh." So oh. cut to Layla. What were you yeah. thinking during this time? Oh, well, you know, I thought he was a really friendly guy, um, but we were an install, meaning we were putting up shows. We were doing long, very late rehearsals yeah, it's an intense... every single day. It's very intense. Yeah. Um, and so I was not even looking or interested in any kind of romantic right. anything. Right. You're just sleeping and, and performing. And, right, yeah, exactly. So, and that was yeah. one of the first nights that we actually got to be social. Okay. Um, and my cast members immediately saw that he was interested and I was completely oblivious to it. And But they were all like, yeah, you should go for it. Come on, you should go for it. I said, no, he's <laughs> leaving in two days. What's the point? What's the point of this? Yeah, right. of course. So when he asked me to lunch, I thought, okay, this is this is sweet. We can yeah. always get to know the guy, you know. It would be nice to do something out of the norm. For okay. The week. And I have to commend you, Josh, because I have worked on ships. I've seen how brief a five day thing can be. And I know what you went through, Loyola, in terms of that crazy schedule for, for an install. So you did some good work at that point. You were were you strategically placing yourself in places that you thought she might be no. during that five day? Yes. <laughs> yes, is the answer. <laughs> I was gonna Absolutely. say, there's not a lot of windows that no. she was free no. and not uh, exhausted. There was one time where I, ca- I, I'll be, I didn't know where she lived, but I knew like the area of the ship generally. <laughs> so I was just standing, kind of meandering around the hallway like a total creep, <laughs> and I was, and I had a moment of, I can't believe we're doing this. Like you are being. If she shows up and realizes that you've been here for a half an hour, <laughs> you're a total creep at this point. <laughs> yeah. You bring a chair into the hall and just waiting. so weird. <laughs> and you only got to see one of my shows open, yeah. and so after that, he actually asked to come and watch one of our other shows. So he and the boys sat in the back of the theater and watched... Um, one of our dress runs. Really? Yeah, we really? watched it and yelled and hooped. And just because we all know, like, it's such a grueling process, and we know that when you don't have an audience, it's exhausting. Sure, you're just and up there. You're just doing it over and over, and yeah. you, there's no real payoff, and there, you don't feel any better about this run or yeah. that run or this take. It not, never, none of it feels good. It's almost like being a stand-up comedian. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you were smitten from the start then this Big is time. very sweet because you hear that you know in the movies you know love at first sight all that stuff, but mm-hmm. you really got hit zonked in it, the head by the old anvil pretty quickly that's, that's really true that's um, how sweet this and is I, I told her so we were about to leave so I mean, at, at, at this point we spent one day together and we our show was, was leaving and I s- couldn't find her one night and I, ra- I cr- like, well, this is when I was creepily walking the hall. <laughs> and her castmates ran into me and said, are you looking for Layla? And I said, yeah. Ah. They, said, they said, well, she she's really tired and, you know, zonked out from the day. But you should call her. And one of her friends who is this little Australian girl, she goes, I think she'd like that. <laughs> okay. Got the girl's looking out for you. So, huh? so no. I called her and I told her, I will probably never see you again. And I know that. And you know that. But I you've just made quite you I want you to know that you're a wonder you're absolutely wonderful and I I I it was so taken by you and I'm I put in with our company any gigs that we had on that ship. I wanted them. 
Oh, my goodness. So that's how I got back there because eventually they did. But I'll, we'll get there in a minute. But So when I was leaving, I immediately emailed my company and said, listen, any gigs we have on that ship, I want them. I didn't back. say why because then, then, then they'd be like... <laughs> I left this. my shoes there. Yeah. <laughs> but I I, uh, I told them that anything... That, you got, Get me back on there. there, yeah. And for the listeners, uh, so some of the shows are shorter term. You come for a week, you come for two weeks, and then Layla was actually on for a period of time, for six several months. months, six months. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. you knew where to find her. Yeah, she wasn't going anywhere, but I was everywhere. So Now, Layla, how did your friends know that eh, it would be a good idea to call her? Had you said some things behind the scenes? They knew that we had had lunch together right um, but people eat before. lunch every day yeah did you, did you say anything off the record you know hey you know. I keep things pretty private <laughs> at that point I kept things pretty private but um they were they could see a spark yeah obviously okay yeah alright cut two. you tell me what's next so uh months later I w- was in I was doing the same show but on a different vessel I was in like it was in Europe and doing two three four three weeks over there and you skipped the part where you stalked me online to oh, find me okay. Okay. I might have skipped that part on purpose yes exactly <laughs> thank god Layla's yeah. here for the details and the, and the good stuff so yes. the thing is so all I know is then this is this cracks me up so I didn't know that Muhammad Ali's daughter is Layla Ali that is hysterical, so, which is Layla's name. Here I go, trying to find <laughs> Layla Ali online. Layla Ali, well, that's certainly not Layla Ali that I know. Okay, <laughs> that's the girl I had lunch with. <laughs> no, and I knew no one from that ship, so I didn't, we had no mutual anybody. You couldn't use Facebook, it was useless. So what I had that to do, amazing. <laughs> so there's an agency in Australia called Star Now. And I just started ran, uh, just frantically Googling Layla Ali Melbourne. Layla <laughs> Ali personal trainer Melbourne. Layla <laughs> Ali dancer Australia. Layla <laughs> Ali. And, and Not finally, Muhammad Ali's daughter. <laughs> yes, anything that would come. And finally, I got a photo and I said, that's her, that's her. Okay, great. <clears throat> well, I go online and it's this agency that's like a modeling agency. All right. And in, in order to get a hold of her, I had to sign up for the agency. <laughs> <laughs> so I still get emails from Star Now being like, it's time to submit for this month's project I love in it. Sydney. And like, I don't even live there. But that's what I had to use to get that Layla. It's amazing. So, you open a company just to I be able did. to... <laughs> so I uploaded a headshot. I uploaded the whole shebang. To make a Star Now profile so that I could message her or at least get her email. <laughs> and I think I got your email off it. And that's oh. I, And so, you know, because it doesn't just let you see the contact info of anybody if you're not a member of the actual site. Right. So I finally copied her email and said, oh, I finally found you. I've been spending, you know, she, she probably heard nothing from me for, what, a week, a week and a half? Yeah. You're probably, I mean, I don't know what you were thinking in that week and a half, but, you know, I was like, she's she's probably there, like, doesn't even think that I'm trying to, and I'm like, trying to find her every day. Right, right. So I finally emailed her, uh, and then we found each other and did the normal online communication from there, but that that first week was really interesting. That is hysterical, and again, how sweet and romantic. A little stalkery, but yeah. It was really stalkery, yeah. <laughs> I'm two for two on the stalkers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In the hallway and in the online. But you have such a lovely smile that is disarming. (laughs) (laughs) If I were doing all this, people would be calling police. But (laughs) he told me this much later. (laughs) Okay, yes, probably best. Probably. But how did you feel when you see a Star Now email? Like, does this? That makes me giggle. Oh yeah, still. (laughs) That's amazing. But I mean, at the time, you get an email like, "Did you join my agency or what the?" Okay, so let now next step after that was an actual booking back on the same ship, or we stayed in contact. Uh, which okay. honestly, in in today's world, we found to be really beneficial. Okay, we had like you, you you didn't have a choice. Yeah, we knew each other. We knew that like face to face, it was great, but it forced us to actually talk about everything. Right. Before it, it was kind of like a like a period where anything in the same room was off the table so it had to all you had to really really understand each other's 
like their real personality. You really get to know someone, yeah. yeah. There's a lot to be said for that. You're not in the same place, so there's actual courtship and exchanging of ideas and thoughts and. How, yeah, that is actually it is you nice. get to know someone. It's it very is old nice. fashioned, I guess. Yeah, but, um, <laughs> facilitated by technology, which couldn't be newer fashion. But no. yeah, you're right. Exactly. Yeah, mm-hmm. physical distance. But he did take it back old school as well, because oh, when geez. he was in Europe, <laughs> he was he was on a ship in Europe, and he hand wrote me letters. Really? Yes. Um, get with a quill on an old ship in the <laughs> basically. <laughs> My um, dearly yeah. beloved. <laughs> That's right. The thing was, he actually messaged me and said, hey, I'm coming back. Okay. And because, you know, we were in Alaska on the sun, so it That's the took name of the ship. That's the, the name of the ship. <laughs> we, 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 on we the sun. On the sun. On the sun. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he said, listen, I'm coming back. And he came back. And because the mailing system takes so long because it has to go through Miami and then to the ship and la la la. Right. And to the moon and yeah. to Jupiter. And <laughs> so it didn't actually reach me until after Josh was already on the ship with me. <laughs> that is too much. Yeah. But he had handwritten you handwritten letters. Mm-hmm. That, well, now was that just a decision to be like, this is going to melt her heart? Or is yes. this the... <laughs> <laughs> Yes, is the answer. I knew I was shooting from far away, so I had to come in You had to come with something? And and did it work? It worked. Does he have decent handwriting? No. (laughs) Because mine would be like block letters like a child wrote it or something. It's pretty bad. Well, that is awfully romantic, though. This is, again, you're three for three at this point in my book. This is is romance central here. So you finally get back, you're working on the ship together, and that after, I assume, then after lots of communication, and now we know each other, mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. and things blossomed? Absolutely. It took three days. It took three? <laughs> yeah. Three? three days. Yeah. And we were like, oh, we need to try and figure out something so we can be in the same country. Wow. <laughs> it was really, I mean, people say a lot of times, oh, well, when you know, you know, and you kind of think, <laughs> shut up. Right, but it's it really was. Oh, you you had a feeling That's of true. oh my goodness, this is that, this, this is, is that thing. I'm totally fine to stop, stop everything to make this thing work. Ah, it was really gosh. uh just smack over the head, clear. Yeah, couldn't be clear. That is sweet to go ahead. So uh, nice to hear though. The universe somehow along the way, ever since we met, has helped us immensely it sounds really crazy but everything that we set our mind to or that we wanted to happen somehow i mean there's been big bumps in the road but somehow it's worked out for us to be in the same place okay yeah um for example um after my contract i had planned to to stay in new york for a couple of weeks right um, and <laughs> he was like, you need to come and stay with me. My roommates already know you, you're just going to come and stay with me. Okay. So I extended my trip to be a month instead of a few weeks, and I stayed. And that gave us a chance to be in the same place, basically living together. Okay. Um, on land. On land. Which helps. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I went home for my best friend's wedding um, that Christmas, and then um, we were trying to get a job together on an NCL ship. Um, and they requested that we both come to a um, in-person audition okay. for this particular show. And so I flew back to New York oh. <laughs> on January 1st, uh. New Year's Day. Oh, my. Um, and we auditioned for the show together, and that's when the NCL proper were like, oh, okay, we really like what you do. And that led to us working together um, on a contract okay. last year. Okay. Yeah. Just last year now this is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, wow. Yeah. All right, so that's now we've arranged it, we like each other, we've lined it up, so we're actually going to yeah. work together. Mm-hmm. Now that's, okay, here yeah. we go. And it was nice because they, we, 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 we cared so much about this new thing, you know, like this relationship that we were also very brazen and just, yeah, and, and, and we're not going to take anything <laughs> unless we're together. That you. Boom, here you go. And, <laughs> But then there it was. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But the minute that we decided that it was more important, right? All of, all of a sudden, sudden, people said, "Oh yeah, sure, okay. here you go." Whereas before, 
as you probably know, people, well, sorry, you yeah. can only, well, well, this is the gig, man. And we you shake can't. our head and say, yes, okay, sorry yeah. for asking, yeah. yeah exactly. and, you know, it's funny you say that because you see it all the time in entertainment. It's such a difficult business and yeah. so hard to get anything. And then I'll see someone uh, start a family or certainly have a kid or something, and then all of a sudden you're here, like, no, I can't do that anymore. And I'm like, they have nerve. How would you ever say no? And then all of a sudden, like, the, the, the other side makes accommodations, and you're going, what? What's going on here? Huh. I've been crying and saying sorry for 10 years in this business. You know? yeah. All of a sudden, you're like, no, I got yeah. more to life. And, yeah, that really is kind of nice to hear. So this is last year, and now you are married. So tell me how, because <laughs> you have one of my favorite wedding stories. If I'm not mistaken, <laughs> you have still not met the whole family, or have you now met everyone? I, I have, except for one of Josh's sister-in-laws. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, but there was a time yeah, there oh, where yeah. you, you hadn't met. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. So we were married before she met any of them. You hadn't met anyone. Okay, <laughs> that's that's what I remember. You guys yeah. get basically got married by yourselves. Yeah. We did. In Hawaii. We did. He on a beach. He did, yeah. Okay, I don't want to, you tell me. I don't want to, you, I don't know the story, so, so if I'm skipping things, yeah. back me up. So we, uh, we love Hawaii, and we have a, as you might be able to gather, we have a very weird, special scenario with, like, immigration and blah, blah, blah. Getting married is difficult with, uh, she's well, Australian. You're an American, American, she's Australian. So, to get married, we did... Long story short, what's called a K-1 visa, which does all the work up front. The flip side of that is when you enter the country, it's like against the clock. You have 90 days to get married. Wow. Yeah. When she, when they click her into the country, here you go, Miss Ali, welcome. Okay. She has 90 yep. days to get married or leave. Really? Yeah. Oh, they hadn't heard of that. All right. So our lawyer said basically, essentially, go from the airport to get married. Go get married immediately somewhere. Immediately. Right. Because the paperwork on the other end takes forever. So, and we, we thought... A, we had already lined up a job that required... Um, I'm jumping ahead. No. Uh, I was going to say, and did I jump ahead? Is there a proposal story I should know about? Because this there guy was, is already... Kind of, yeah. yeah, so let me... Uh, that's my fault. Okay. Let no, me back good. up because I jumped right to getting married. But, yeah. So you, you've done everything else so well. So let's start with the, pro like, uh, so we did a, pro uh, the, uh, it was Easter weekend uh, 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 last year, and we were Which on, we didn't uh, realize. on this vessel, <laughs> yeah, I didn't, no. So on this ship, actually, this one that we're on right now, the one that goes through the Hawaiian Islands, and I was on with my old job, so just job it on for a couple of weeks, and I signed Layla on as just to cruise with me and hang out, you know, not working, not, and I had planned my guys in the show knew that I was going to ask. I had a ring. I had the whole thing. It was being delivered to our mailbox on the little island of Kauai. It arrived that day. Oh, my. I drove with her. Oh, yeah, yeah, hon, we're going to go to the north end of the island. It'll be a nice day. But we'd stop by a UPS where I'm frantically hiding her, the <laughs> ring that just came in the mail. <laughs> As, yeah, what is, what is that, babe? Oh, it's just a box of, of show CDs. Uh, <laughs> don't mind them. So we drive to the North Shore, and there's like hundreds and hundreds of people on this beach. Okay. And Hanalei, Hanalei Bay, if, if, if you Google it, it's beautiful and, and pretty and, and, and huge. And normally there's not a lot of people there. And my words at the time, I was so nervous about it. I said, there are so many people... There's so many people. I I was told there'd be no people. <laughs> the brochure had yeah. a picture of no one yeah. on the beach. I was so nervous about it, and she's you know just it's okay, huh? Don't worry, it's gonna be fine. Like there'll be, there's plenty of space. Yeah, you perform for was, thousands every night yeah, with the brochure. So, <laughs> so I yeah, but so I finally we walked what felt like five miles to get past everyone, and then I finally. You know, did it where I, I felt we were secluded enough that it would be fine. I was told there'd be you have the people. package with you from the post office? Or? No, that would be a lot funnier. If I I mean, the thing. You're going to give me a say, CD right now? <laughs> <laughs> Get on one knee and give me one of your albums? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you finally went, okay. Yeah, so so we, we, we did that, and so we figured we love Hawaii, we want to get married here, and it kind of 
holds some cool value to us because it's basically the middle of Australia and the U.S. That's true. It's kind of right Especially in the middle. Especially in the East Coast. Yeah, yeah, that's true. So we went to get married and we, we wanted to get married as soon as quickly, like as soon as possible so that we could get her, uh, so we could progress with this kind of thing that we've started to build. Sure. This kind of thing together and not like a brand together per se, but you know, a, a, a thing that we're selling as a unit. Being able right. to work together. Work together, yes. Yeah. So in order to do that, we had to get it done as quick as possible. And so our, our families, we couldn't in good conscience say, Hey, we got our K one visa. We're getting married in three weeks. Can you fly Everyone's to Hawaii? Everyone's got to fly all around the world. No yeah, yeah. So we decided we're gonna make the best of it. We brought the GoPro. <laughs> Thanks, GoPro. <laughs> and uh, chucked it in the sand on a tripod, and it's us and the uh, minister or f- efficient, whatever you want to call him. And he and was great. This you found he, just he a local was Hawaiian, a local Hawaiian dude who just looked like an an old hippie. I love just, it. He was wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And he has just this online business where he marries people different places. We've looked him up. The three of you on the beach. That's it. And that the GoPro it. in the sand recording. Yeah. That was it. I love it. It was just, but it was very us. And then we had a very weird non traditional marriage day. We did that. We finished. We went back. We, we went and had like a Mai Tai on the beach. And then we changed and thought, you want to go hike? Um, what was it called? Cocoa Head. Cocoa Head, head uh-huh. which is a hu- huge uh, expenditure of energy. <laughs> <laughs> this is your wedding day. Yeah. You want to hike a mountain. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds nice. You sure did. Let's do that. Yeah, That's amazing. <laughs> which is so you guys. I mean, that really is what how I think of you. You've invited me to hike three times in the last four days, and I've said no. <laughs> let, alone, let alone my wedding day. <laughs> And, but that yeah. is so you guys. You 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 hike, you strap it on, you take full advantage of where you are. <laughs> and well, yeah. <laughs> it's, well it's, not, it's not that kind of podcast. <laughs> that is so amazing. And I've seen the photographs of your wedding and they're fantastic, which by the way, you do do lovely work. I couldn't believe you're like, no, there's no one taking that's just in the sand. Yeah. Um and so, yeah, so tell me more about that thing, because you guys are adventuresome. Now you're married, and you guys literally do. Every time I talk to you, you're up to you. I'm exhausted just looking at your, listening to your schedule, because every time I oh. see you, you've <laughs> just come from them, you've jumped yeah. out of a thing or off a thing or into a thing, and, yeah, you're doing 6 a.m. yoga, and you're, I mean, you just, you, you, I, I've never seen someone take so advantage of where they are, and right now we're in Hawaii, which is where I've known you guys the most, and, um, yeah, well, I mean, it's, it's just that that's you both love that kind of spirit and adventure. We really do. And yeah. Josh is wonderful at planning a full adventure day from top to tail. He perfectly times everything so that we're back by all aboard or back by enough time to go to Happy Hour Wings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Wherever we might be, it's always timed perfectly. And, yeah, we just, we love Hawaii. We, there's just a a great energy Mm -hmm. here that we want to take advantage of. And there's so much to do. There there really is. There really is. And so we just love getting out there. Our, our, my thing is, if you're going to be somewhere, especially as we get to, sometime on on someone else's dime. Right. It's kind of a slap in the face to the gorgeous world, in my opinion, to not try to stuff everything in that you can sure. while you're there. Absolutely. Be it, what do they have here that you can't do anywhere else? What do they have here that you can't eat anywhere else? What do they have here that you can't drink anywhere else? What do they have... Like, just, what do they do here better than anywhere, and you should go do go. whatever that thing is Absolutely. that day. And so we, we try. We honestly sometimes, we get, like, reverse burnout. We'll we'll be, one just once, uh, once every couple of weeks, we won't go do something. We'll just, and we're just going to go to the beach and play some volleyball. And halfway through the day, I come over, and I'm like a little <laughs> kid. Hey, this is great. I don't have anything to do. I don't have to. I don't have to like get corral everybody in the car. What a nice day! This is the best. <laughs> this is so good. Okay. 
well, you earn your days off. But I do know that feeling. I, as a comedian, I've travel obviously a bunch, and sometimes I'm in the middle of nowhere. And depending on who I'm dating, or sometimes my mom will like look up where I am and just be like, "You're only 200 miles from the largest ball of yarn. You have to go see it." I was like, and it starts to feel like almost assignment sometimes when when you're in certain places, you know, yeah. the first whatever in the world. But yeah, here in Hawaii, you're right. It's such a unique place and and such a gorgeous place. And I've joined you on some of your adventures. Yeah. And my favorite might have been the brewery, or not even a brewery, where you're like, we're going to go, we're going to go to this. Yeah. You said it was a brewery. I guess it was. It's like a but shed. We <laughs> drive around, and no one else in the world knows about this place, but somehow Josh finds out, and you knock on a trash can, and some dude hands you a ticket, and you go you know, <laughs> to, to a back door, and you think you're going to get in. All of a sudden, you're in a room, and a tiny room, and yeah, 10 by 10 room, but uh, this awesome. guy somehow finds and knows everything. Good. <laughs> yeah, he does. That was a good one, too. I'm thinking back of that one. That was yeah. a great yeah. one. That was a good... Mm, yeah, mm, well, mm. I tell you what, Layla, if you hadn't have married him, I would have, because I, could, <laughs> <laughs> I can't I can't sit in the positions like you can. I'm not as good at a dancer. And, uh, uh, but yeah, I, uh, you guys, are, there's a reason I wanted to talk to you. You're just, I love you guys so much, and I think it, I'm, it warms my heart, because you, there's so much, you know, bad stories in the world these days with everything from love to everything, but it, it makes me happy to know that you guys truly found each other, because it seemed like it was destiny. Yeah. It, yeah. It, as you look back on it, it seems more and more there's so much wind at our back this whole time. Yeah. It feels like it's been. Sometimes things would happen that we had nothing to do with. Right. But maybe we did in a in a very ethereal kind of yeah. new agey way. But who, who, who knows? knows? But it's or just when, like you said, you want something and yeah. you know you want it, it, it goes out into the universe and yeah, and you also aren't willing to put up with some of the BS that maybe you would have if yeah. you you know yeah. Well, it warms my heart, and um, it makes me very excited to, to know you guys and see what's next. Um, how do we count out from here? Well, there's only one way that we're going to say goodbye to this yeah, podcast. Exactly. And <laughs> 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 Layla, oh, yeah. take it away, Layla. Some hot liquor. <laughs> <laughs> we're looking for some hot liquor. <laughs> Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. Hey, thanks so much for listening to Greetings from Somerville. Please subscribe, rate, and review us on iTunes, and listen to all three of my stand-up comedy albums for free on Spotify, Pandora, and SiriusXM. I'm Michael Somerville. Have a great day. Greetings from Somerville.